Well, hello there, my little seedlings. It's Yaya here with another episode of Storytime with Yaya and Papa Moon. Before we get started, I want to show you my new flower. So this is a kalacha. It looks like teeny tiny little bitty roses. And it has the prettiest smell. So I'm gonna let you smell a vision that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. I love plants. <clears throat> this over here is Clementine. Clementine had a rough winter. So she is a lay tree. You know, the little flowers that they make into necklaces and they put around people's necks in Hawaii? That's what Clementine is. All of my plants have names. I'm uh, nursing her back to health and she's got some new little leaves coming up. So I'm really excited. All right. So today's episode is coming from the Never Girls, book two, The Space in Between. We are on chapter two. All right, so here we go. Skye, the seeing talent fa fairy, was one who had figured out how the girls had come to Neverland. She'd also figured out why they couldn't return home again. As Skye had explained it, Neverland was unlike other islands. It drifted on the seas of children's dreams, moving wherever it wished. One day, it had drifted close to the world of Clumsies, so close that the tiniest bit of magic had pulled four unsuspecting girls into its shores. Kate, Mia, Lainey, and Gabby had always believed in fairies, but their wildest dreams came true when they arrived there on Prilla's Blink. The island had drifted away again, and the four girls had been stranded. But now, Neverland was close to the girls' world again. I saw the mainland with my own eyes, Skye told the girls. Perla can blink you back home again, right away, but you must hurry. But what about Skull Rock, said Kate, and the mermaid, said Gabby, and the fairy dance, said Mia, and the robin chick, said Lainey. If you don't go now, you might never make it back. Who knows when Neverland will be this close to your world again, Sky said. The girls had always known this day would come. They just hadn't thought it would be so soon. Not one of them wanted to leave, but if they didn't, they might never see their families again. So they would have to say goodbye to the flower-filled meadow and burbling Habendash stream, to the magnificent home tree and all the kind, lovely fairies who lived there. And isn't it just a see you later goodbye? Lainey thought, it is really and truly farewell. <clears throat> Children who left Neverland never came back. The fairy Tinkerbell had told them. They grew up too quickly and forgot about it. With heavy hearts, the four girls went to their willow tree room to pack. Sunlight shone through the willow branches as they entered, casting a jade green glow over the room. Lainey looked at the hammocks where they'd slept, the firefly lanterns hanging from the tree limbs, and the mossy carpet on the ground. There isn't anything to pack, she realized. They come to Pixie Hollow with nothing but the clothes that they had on. I want to take something home with me, Mia had said. She picked up a tiny folding fan that a fairy had left behind. The fan was made from daisy petals held together with pine needles. Mia put it in her pocket. Kate found an itty bitty kaleidoscope that a pots and pans fairy had cobbled together with bits of scrap metal. A water talent fairy had cast the lens from a single drop of dew. Gabby chose a daisy garland that the garden talent fairies had woven. She placed it on her head like a crown. It'll wilt, you know, Mia warned her little sister. Well. Pages are stuck together hanging. <clears throat> I don't care, Gabby said, sticking out her lip. Lainey looked around for a souvenir of her own. She considered her licorice twig, twig toothbrush or one of the firefly lanterns, but neither seemed right. She wished she could take a pet home with her, her doe maybe, or one of the little, livelier little squirrels. But of course, she knew the animals belonged to Neverland. Besides, her mother would never allow it. Her mother didn't even like goldfish. At last, she picked up a mouse herder's lasso. It was made of braided never grass. Lainey slipped it over her wrist like a bracelet, pulling the end tight. She remembered the day Fawn had used it to lasso a wayward dairy mouse. Think of the, thinking of that reminded Lainey of her lesson earlier that day. I'll never learn how to speak deer now, she thought, filled Lainey with sadness. Prilla appeared in the doorway of the willow room. Her bright, open face was unusually glum. Sky says you must hurry. There isn't much time. Taking one last look around their room, the girls followed Prilla out the door. Beneath the hawthorn tree on the far side of Pixie Hollow was a ring of mushrooms. There was the fairy circle where Pixie Hollow's magic was the strongest. When Lainey and her friends got there, they were surprised to see all the fairies gathered together. 
animal fairies, fast flying fairies, water fairies, light fairies, garden fairies, harvest fairies, baking fairies, dressmaking fairies, art fairies, story sharing fairies, and dozens more. Fairies from every talent had come to see the girls off. Clarion, queen of the never fairies, stood at the head of the fairy circle. Her wings were folded solemnly behind her in honor of the sad moment. She nodded to the girls to step inside the circle. The fairies have a parting gift for you, said the queen. At her cue, Terence, a dust talent sparrow man, flew forward. He held out a velvet sack, no, big, no bigger than a peach pit. You know what a peach pit is? That's that little seed inside of a peach. It's called a peach pit. It's a bit of fairy dust, said the queen. Just one pinch for each of you. Perhaps one day you can use it to find your way back to Pixie Hollow. How will we know the way? Kate wondered. Is there a map? <clears throat> the, the queen spread her hands. I can't say for sure. Neverland drifts about on the waves, always moving. But some say to get here from the mainland, you should look for the second star to the right and fly straight on till morning. Thanking the queen, Kate took the bag of, bag of dust from Terrence <clears throat> and put it in her pocket. Several fairies and sparrow men came forward then to say special goodbyes to the girls. Lainey searched the crowd for Fawn, but she didn't see her friend anywhere. At last, Skye entered the circle. You must go now, she told Prilla and the girls. Neverland is on the move again. Soon it will be too late. Kate, Lainey, Mia, and Gabby held hands. Prilla landed in Gabby's open palm. Fly, sup, the queen started to say as Prilla blinked. In that moment, all of Pixie Hollow winked out. The trees, the flowers, the sky, the fairy circle, and the fairies themselves, everything vanished. The rest of Queen Clarion's words were lost. An instant later, the girls found themselves in me and Gabby's backyard. They looked around at the tall wooden fence, the neatly mowed lawn, and the tidy rows of petunias in the flower bed. A soccer ball sat nearby in the grass. Lainey picked it up, turning it over in her hands. They'd been playing a game with the ball just before they blinked to Neverland. That seemed like a lifetime ago, like something she dreamed. Are we really home? asked Gabby. Kate pinched herself. Ouch, she said, but she didn't sound certain. They heard a high bell-like noise, like the tinkle of a fairy's laugh. All the girls turned toward the sound, but it was only Mia's cat, Bingo. The bells on Bingo's collar jangled as he ran toward them. Mia scooped up the cat in her arms and she buried her face in his fur. Oh, Bingo, I've missed you. Meow, Bingo complained as Mia squeezed him tightly. He wriggled out of her arms and wandered off to chase grasshoppers. <clears throat> Just then, the back door to the house opened. Gabby, are you out there? Called a familiar voice. Mommy! Mammy! Gabby squealed. She went running toward her mother, her curls bouncing and her furry wings flapping on her back. Mia turned to Lainey and Kate with wide eyes. What am I going to tell her? We've been gone for days. Remember what Prilla taught us about a blink, Lainey reminded her? When she travels on a blink, time moves differently. Let's hope it's true, Kate looked worried. Otherwise, we're gonna be in for it. Do you think it's the same if we fly to Neverland? Does time stop the same way? Speaking of that, Mia said, what about the fairy dust? Shouldn't we put it somewhere safe? It's plenty safe. I've got it right here, Kate said, petting her pocket. An odd look flashed across her face. Kate dug her hand into her pocket. Then she checked her other pocket. She turned both pockets inside eight, out. Mia frowned. Kate, that's not funny. Quit messing around. I'm not joking, Kate said in a choked voice. The fairy dust is gone. Oh, that's sad that they had to go home. <clears throat> Have you ever been someplace that you had so much fun? Have you ever been to the beach and played in the sand and it was so much fun you didn't want to go home? But sometimes you have to go home. But then you get to go on other adventures to other places. So, okay. All right, my sweets. Until the next time, see if you can't find a plant or a flower that you can put in the ground, play in some dirt. Always makes me feel good. I love you so much. I miss you. To the next time.